Bamboo Bedslinger brings bouncy banding. Core XY keeps things cleanish. PGG proves picky, producing persistent print fuzz. And razor removal wrecks routine results in ER reminders and records. All this and more, Print Fix Friday, episode 192. Let's get into it. Starting off with a fan submission who sent it over to us in an email. So thank you, VJ Biker, for making that happen. If you do have issues with your prints, you want to get some help, links down below. So we have some issues here with some banding on silk gold parts. We've got parts off of an X1 carbon as well as some A1 minis, and this is to help increase production capacity with this individual's project. When they try this exact same file, Without using silk filament, there are no print artifacts at all. The best guess is that the print artifacts are those kind of uh, diagonal lines. It's a very common issue when you don't have enough temperature. And so this is the thing with silk filament. It is often filled with TPU. How do we know this? Because we actually made some at printed solid We'll card to that video so you all can take a look. But that TPU melts at a higher temperature than the PLA. And when you're printing relatively fast, which that's kind of what bamboos are known for, you need to up the temperature quite a bit. We often find that the stock profiles for bamboo are very aggressive when it comes to speed and acceleration, but not aggressive at all when it comes to temperature. So we often add between 10 and 30 degrees Celsius to the actual print temperatures to make sure that the material flows well. I would try adding maybe 10 or 15 degrees Celsius here and allow it to flow a little bit better and see how that goes. While the issues are more prevalent on the A1 minis, which are the two off to the right. I think that has more to do with the actual hot end geometry than anything else. The A1 mini versus the X1 carbon use different styles of hot ends with different amounts of thermal mass, different heaters, different heating systems, different, well, everything. This goes to show you that what kind of works on one won't really work on another. Another thing to note is that at least on the X1, it appears that this issue is most persistent where we have this inner ring that comes out as well. This is likely because the machine is able to print faster along those areas where on these vertical walls, it must slow down to deal with the minimum layer time. At least that's my theory here. So I would look at increasing your temperature, potentially decreasing the speed overall. And even when we look to the right at the A1 Mini, they're claiming 50 millimeters a second and 40 on the outer walls. And we are still seeing these issues. At those slow speeds, we should not be seeing any issues whatsoever. I would still look at increasing the temperatures. I don't think that printing silk that slow is realistic in any stretch of the imagination, especially if you're doing this as a business, you need to churn out these parts faster. You bought machines to do stuff fast. If they don't print fast, there was no reason to spend the money on those machines. You could have gotten a cheaper machine save yourself a bunch of the BS, but we're here, so we might as well work through it, right? So I would look at going to like 240, 250, or even 260 for any silk PLAs. They tend to like extra heat. And if you're looking for extra shine, more heat gives you more shine. When you see silk filaments actually reduce in their shine, it is often because they're not getting enough heat, but you don't necessarily have to run it all that slow. If you want to uh, play the game a little bit, you can speed up the interior walls quite a bit, slow down the exterior wall, which is really where all of that shine is going to be. And that way you can reasonably get these things printed at a higher speed. Hopefully that helps. Speaking of helping, my name is Grant. This is 3D Musketeers, where we help you get your printers back to printing with purpose here on the Print Fix Friday series. And if you guys didn't know, right now we are on our way to the Rocky Mountain Rep Rat Fest. We will be there both Saturday and Sunday filming all day. So come hang out with us. Come say hi. Get to see some behind the scenes filming. And uh, who knows, maybe make it into a video or something like that. We're going to be going around and interviewing people as well. So get ready. It's gonna be a lot of fun. And if you missed it, we just got back from Sweden. We've been doing a lot of traveling. Thanks, Bond Tech, for everything, because that was an absolutely amazing trip, including trying the Sustromen, the Swedish nasty fish. Not the Swedish fish you get here in America. Uh-uh. The Swedish fish you get in Sweden? Mm-mm. That stuff is rough. Oh, so bad! But shout out to Slavko and Jimmy, who also 
did that challenge with me. And a huge thank you again to the entire Bontech team for getting us out there to Sweden. We have a lot of content coming from that event and we did three streams. So we'll card to those so you guys can take a look and link to them down in that description. And with Rocky Mountain coming up, it's from one adventure to another. And if you do have issues with your adventures in 3D printing, you can submit them. Links in that description down below. And if you enjoy it, make sure to leave a like and get subscribed. Moving on to the first time using PETG on a P1S. They're using the generic PETG preset. Looks great on the outside, but like this on the inside near, but not on the ZC. But wait a minute. I, I was told it's what's on the outside that counts. So like, are we just cool? Can we just like, nothing to see here, boys. Move it along. You got some stringing issues on the PETG. Let's take a look here. This is a pretty common issue that we see with PETG. It is somewhat, sometimes, related to moisture. If the PETG is damp, go ahead and dry it. The nice thing about PETG is that if you keep it in a dryer and it's always dry, it doesn't care. It's very happy being dry all the time. So let it be dry. Often, it's not going to fully solve these issues, but it gets you moving in the right direction. What we're seeing here though, is part of the PETG pulling away from the part. This is likely associated with a movement that is occurring. And yes, there is the Z seam there, but my guess is that this is more of a crossing a perimeter problem. You can increase your retraction. That should solve a lot of what we see here. You can also turn on avoid crossing perimeters where instead of going directly across the pipe, the machine will go around it so that if there is any ooze, it occurs inside of your part rather than outside. The other options, get yourself one of these fancy blow torches and give it some fire. Whatever one really works best for you. Uh, Victoria Blowtorch t-shirt coming soon. You can check out merch in that description as well. But yeah, honestly, torch it. It's for a fish tank anyways. And realistically, if you don't have holes for the water to get in, this thing ain't sinking anyways. So, you know... Might want to think about that. But you can also like hot glue this to ceramic tiles and things like that or terracotta. That's what we used to do back in the day. But as far as 3D prints in fish tanks, there is some evidence to state that 3D prints do leach semi-toxic chemicals into fish tanks. If you do have a decent filtration system, maybe one with multiple layers of filter mesh pads. Uh, we often use the uh, pot scrubbies from the $1.25 tree. Uh, they work really well inside of canister filters, those will often do a good job in filtering it out. Biomedia is great for this too, but just be careful. Check the levels of your tank when you add this stuff in. Don't be afraid to add a little bit of salt if you need to, to kill off anything that's rough in there. And if you're really trying to go hard in the paint, uh, carbon tends to kind of fix everything, but this isn't a fish channel. Just be careful with that stuff. I understand you're trying to go for that wood look. If it's not dead solid, it's not going to sink. And Quite frankly, you can often find really, really nice pieces of driftwood for very little money. So, I don't know. You get tips beyond 3D printing here. You never thought you'd get it. It's Grant's fish tips. <laughs> I would just torch it. It's for a fish tank anyways. The fish aren't going to care. Put a torch in it. Burn it smooth. No big deal. Call it a day. I understand that you want to clean it up but I don't think there's any reason to waste the material to reprint it. This is perfectly serviceable for a fish tank. You have nothing to worry about there. Next up is a viewer discretion advised. This is going to be a story of an individual who got a little too overzealous with a razor. You have been warned. If you would like to skip this one, you can go to this timestamp and you'll completely skip this. Thanks editors. Considering the fail, is this in bad taste? Thumbs up, stitched up. Warning, second picture is an injury. We are going to blur that, don't worry. If you've used scrapers long enough, you've likely stabbed yourself with a scraper. I myself have quite a few scars on my non-dominant hand and one or two on my dominant hand from, well, digging into the 3D prints with a scraper. Flexible build plates have all but removed this issue for us. We highly recommend that if you don't have a flex build plate, that you use a flex build plate. But looking at Orca in the background on their MacBook there, they're using a bamboo. Why were you using a scraper on a bamboo? I will say I do really like these Panda Edge scrapers from BQ and Big Tree Tech. They're really nice. They even got a little thumb choil. They're made of metal. And they got a magnet. 
two magnets even. And the blade's replaceable. So when you inevitably dull it out, that is a really nice touch. These blades are sharp enough, can absolutely hurt you. And under no circumstances should you have one hand behind it. I know none of you are going to actively listen to that. So instead, I'm going to recommend that you get yourself a cutting glove. You can get them in chain mail. Super cool. Like who doesn't want chain mail? There's also Kevlar ones, but be warned, scrapers and Kevlar cutting gloves don't go together. They'll often cut right through it. But the chainmail ones are a pretty good way to stop that problem. But so is taking the bill plate off and going Bleh! and just flexing it and the parts come off. You shouldn't have this issue. I hope you're not American because if you are, RIP your bank account. And if you aren't American, you can laugh at my bad American healthcare jokes in the comments. We can see they jabbed the razor with a lot of force into their left hand thumb, bone stopped it from going further. We've got our whole stitched up situation. A couple of stitches there, not too bad, but we can see a pretty serious divot there in the thumb. The stitches do look pretty good. Very impressed with how the doctor did it. And uh, hilariously, they were using the plastic version of this. Don't put your hand in the freaking way. The girlfriend patched them up, but as they had just gotten home from a bar, the individual had to drive themselves to the emergency room. They needed a few stitches. It is healed up since with some scarring and nerve damage. And as someone that has nerve damage, I have nerve damage in my legs from a back injury. It's not fun. Part of it is numb and they can get pain jolts when there is force applied in a specific area, which doesn't happen much. They've worked with tools, Heavy shop machines, saws, routers, chisels, plasma torches, welders, etc. for about 15 years on a daily basis for their business. Never had an injury worse than a splinter or a little superficial cut. Had not expected 3D printing would be the thing to get me. And that's the trick. You get complacent around these tools. I've done it. I'm sure a lot of you in those comments have done it. I'd love to know, have you actually done this before? Because I have. I've done it plenty of times. Hell, I think I've done it on stream once or twice before where I've like stabbed myself with tools. It takes a split second to take a tool and effectively turn it into a weapon. I'm not a huge fan of using scrapers. In fact, we normally use them to clean off build plates. I just like this one because I can stick it to the shelf behind me and it's not really a big deal and I don't end up losing it like I could lose these. But realistically, flex plate should solve 95% of these problems. You just take the plate out, you bend it, the parts might go all over the place, but that's a lot better than your blood going all over the place. We got some rough overhangs here on a Flashforge AD5M 0.4 nozzle. They're using Elegoo's True Red, and they've ran through flow ratios of 1.029. That's a very specific, but whatever. If it works, it works. Pressure advance of 0.04, and they're printing a temp tower with 0.14 layers using the latest Orca. Any idea why the overhangs are so rough or how to smooth them out? Thanks. We can see in the comments, they've added further detail that they're using volumetric speed of 19 cubic millimeters per second, and that the fan speed set to a minimum 35, max 85, retraction length is set to 0.9. There's your problem. More cooling, more better. With PLA, while it is technically possible to overcool PLA, you are not overcooling PLA. You are undercooling the PLA. Turn up those fans to 100% and send it. The actual temperatures you have here starting at like the 195 and then going to maybe like 235, 240, that is a great range for PLA. Often we find on these higher speed printers, somewhere in the 210 to 220 range is ideal, but realistically without enough cooling, none of that matters anyways. Give it all the cooling shill muster captain and send it. 100% minimum, 100% maximum, no cooling the first layer or two, and it will be all better relatively soon. Hope that helps. And if you do want a more in-depth look at temperature towers, we actually did an entire Print Fix Friday dedicated to temperature towers, which we'll card to if you do want to take a gander. And hey, if you do enjoy the series and do want to support and you want to maybe get your name listed right next to me at the $5 tier and higher with those awesome folks who support the channel and the things that we do here, you can do so by joining via those links in that description down below. You could buy some merch with some new designs coming soon. In fact, we have a meeting coming up really soon that I'm really excited for because there are some really cool new designs that I think you guys are really going to like. But that is all we have for you all today. Check out the rest of Print Fix Friday series below me. And next to that will be our look at great British sports cars where I almost spent way too much money. <laughs> Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one.